I'm going to talk about district ge geopolitical activities today. Uh, Germany and France will go to war, civil war in the U.S. Peter will be a uh, Nigerian presidential candidate uh, and South versus North Korea. These are the topics that we're going to talk about today. Dmitry Medvedev, uh, deputy chairman of Russia, is Security Council, says that Germany and France will go to war. Former Russian president, which is the most loyal member of Vladimir Putin, a circle of allies, he says that uh, next year, 2023, uh, there will be a big war between the two most powerful European nations and that a civil war will happen again here in the United States. That will make uh, Elon Musk the next president of the U.S. Medvedev uh, served as a uh, Russian president for four years, from May 7, 2008 to May 7, 2012 while Vladimir Putin held the office of Prime Minister. He has been very influential in decision-making in Kremlin. He was recently also appointed as uh, Putin is deputy overseeing Russian uh, military industry. He predicted a list of events that will happen in the West um, on his personal Telegram and Twitter account. And he also says that the uh, United Kingdom will rejoin European Union and that uh, EU will collapse. Elon Musk responded to, to his tweet which a short, uh, with a short message, epic thread. Medvedev has applauded Musk in the past for proposing Ukraine concede territory to Russia in a peace deal. Since Russia's special operation in Ukraine, Dmitry Medvedev has been a loud voice criticizing Zelensky and the Ukrainians. He once called them cockroaches, and Zelensky said uh, this type of language is openly genocidal. Russia has been strengthening its relationship with, with China uh, by sending Medvedev uh, last week to Beijing to meet with, uh, with Chinese strongman Xi Jinping. Dmitry is seen as the probable successor of Vladimir uh, Putin. Russia is uh, working uh, to fend tension between Berlin and Paris. The two powerful European nations, uh, well, now I ask, will these two European um, hustlers go to war in 2023? We will see. He also predicted that the oil price will rise to $150 a barrel and that the gas will rise to $5,000 per, per thousand broad money. He had uh, Poland and Hungary will occupy western part of Ukraine, which means uh, Ukrainians will become homeless. This is ruthless. He also says that uh, the Fourth Reich, which uh, uh, will be created in Germany, which means that uh, the Nazis will be back in power in Germany, and that uh, Northern Ireland uh, will separate from the United Kingdom. He also predicted that big stock markets will leave the U.S., and join the Asia market. Euro and dollar will go down and stop circulating as global reserve currencies, he says. And also he said gold-backed currencies will take over. Germany and France uh, have been bumping heads on several uh, issues, including the energy crisis between the EU and Russia. And Germany is heavily dependent on um, more than half of its consumption on Russian gas and uh, has been more affected, uh, affected than some EU members, uh, which forced German uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz to announce an energy fund of more than 210 billion of dollars in subsidies because of high energy prices since the beginning of the Russia uh, special operation in Ukraine, which angers the EU members uh, because they were, uh, they were made, uh, the decisions were made without uh, seeking advice from the EU allies. Emmanuel Macron, French president, uh, criticized the move and says that uh, uh, Berlin should not undermine European unity. And German boss Schulz replied to Macron that Germany could afford this relief package thanks to their ability to manage the resources responsibly. 
France did not like the answer because it was seen as a dig of France, its national debt, which is equivalent to close to 114% of the GDP. The opposing views also have been increasing in the defense sector because Germany chose to buy American weapons like uh, F-35 airplane and France didn't like it because the deal could uh, undermine the development of a joint Franco-German fighter aircraft program. Germans are planning to invest over $100 billion to boost its defense capability and they want to be uh, the best in Europe which France didn't like. And China-Taiwan crisis situation as well is another relationship killer between these, these two EU members. Germany allowed Chinese firm Costco Shipping Holdings uh, to invest in essential uh, Hamburg port, uh, which is the largest port in the Dutch land. And was not, uh, it was not seen with uh, good eyes in France because uh, these are very important European infrastructures. Germany has an economy that leans more toward the international market and is heavily dependent on the, on the Chinese market, which is, uh, which is the largest trading partner uh, whose revenues exceed 244 billion euro in just 2021. Therefore, they are doing what is best for them, of course. France's economy, on the other hand, does not depend on China, but I don't believe that Germany and France will go to war because beside many differences, they are still Europeans and will definitely manage their differences. Both France and Germany will have um, a joint me uh, cabinet meeting in Paris in January uh, to resolve their issues. January next year. Remember, both countries are the main pieces of the European Union and uh, recently do, uh, uh, they worked together to defy the U.S. against that, uh, uh, that they call unfair trade practices by the United States. So they will always resolve the issues. Peter Robi, Nigerian presidential candidate, uh, pledged uh, with his supporters to vote for him. He says, quoting, I want to build Nigeria where the son of nobody will become somebody. Watch this video. I urge you to vote for me because I show you, and I'm showing you on this holy ground, I'll come around Nigeria. Peter Obi, um, a third party candidate, is the surprising top Nigerian choice to become the next Oga president. <laughs> I like the Nigerian expression Oga, okay? And also I like Gbang. <laughs> and also, uh, you know how they put ho, the use at the end of every sentence? That's cool. The election will be uh, uh, held on February 25, 2023, to elect the president and vice president of the giant of Africa. The poll suggests that the, Pete, uh, the Peter Obi of the Labour Party is leading and behind him is Atiko Bubakar of the People uh, Democratic Party and Bola Tinubu uh, All Progressive Congress Party. Obi is commanding the, the lead with 40.37%, Atiko Bubakar second with 26.7%, and Tinubu with 20.47%. Peter Obi, a businessman and politician aged 61, served as the governor of a number state from November 2006 to March uh, 2014. His campaign has been described as populist, like Inácio Lula da Silva, which won the Brazilian presidency. Lula's party is also called Labour Party, like Peter Obi's party. See, this is what Africa needs, democracy and competing ideas okay, to develop our continent. Peter Obi is loved by the young generation of Nigerians who will rule Nigeria and Africa for sure. We Africans are done with old incompetent people staying in power 
for the rest of their lives while the population suffers. The young, gener the young generation of Nigerians who will rule Nigeria and Africa. We Africans are done with uh, all incompetent people uh, staying in power for the rest of their lives while the population suffers. The young generation will lead Africa to tremendous success. All these old candidates and presidents, it's time for them to retire and leave us alone. So the new generation of millenniums, Gen Z and Generation Alpha will transfer, uh, will transform Africa. Peter Robi, I believe, is the best choice for Nigeria. And also in the future, I would like to see uh, Mr. Governor of Akwebon State, Udong Emmanuel, become president of Nigeria. He is a great leader. He is doing amazing things in Akwebon, Huyo City. He is a peacemaker and uh, he works well with everyone. Now we're going to go to North Korea. So North Korea again challenged South Korea by flying drones into South Korea airspace and conducting uh, a surveillance mission that promptly forced Seoul to quickly mobilize military jets, and, but fails to, to shoot down North Korean drones. South Korean President uh, Yoon suk Yo was upset with his military chiefs, which he called lack of military preparedness. This situation raised tension between these two brothers who are enemies. Both Korea were divided by the, the Soviet Union and the U.S. Uh, in the 38 parallel, which is a popular name given to latitude 38th north that demarcates North Korea and South Korea. Uh, this, uh, this line was chosen by the U.S. military planners at the Potsdam Conference in July 1945. Pyongyang has been provoking Japan and CO uh, with nuclear testing and uh, ballistic missiles, which also involved the U.S. and this North Korean incursion appeared to have called and uh, caught the South Korean command center and prepared as they failed to stop this from happening. Hey, this showed that the North Korea is still a force to reckon with, okay? They are very strong and can be ignored. South Korea capital is very close to the to the border with North Korea, uh, which make it very vulnerable to North Korean artillery and bombs. These North Korean drones are reported to, to have flown over several cities inside South Korea, conducting aerial surveillance of the country, including the capital seal. Very dangerous and humiliating. This also highlights the weaknesses of the South Korean military in defending its airspace. Even though South Korea, in response, fired several rounds but failed to shoot down um, these North Korean drones, Lee Seung Ho, a senior official of the South Korean Joint Chief of Staff, says that uh, they were more worried about now, uh, not causing uh, damage to nearby infrastructure and citizens, uh, which led to the failure to deter the North drones. He also says that uh, there were five North Korean drones in retaliation. South Korea also sent his own spy airplane to the other side of the border of a North Korea's territory. One of, uh, one of the South Korean fighter jets uh, slides sideways on the runway trying to take off to counter the North, North drone. We are certainly living in a very dangerous world today of never-ending conflicts across the planet.